So, I talked to him the day before he passed. Wow. That was so sad. Because he was telling me he had just had double knee surgery. Wow. And he said, Mike, he said, I don't know how I'm holding up all his ass, but these <laughs> knees is killing me. <laughs> and we had a conversation. He said, I want to go see my kids. Wow. One of them was down in Florida. He said, he said, but the, it's the holidays, and they don't. They say they're just gonna come up for Christmas. Yeah, we on Boss Talk TV. Shout out to E. He the reason you see. Me. Oh, I want to go back to some. I want to go back to uh, Tommy Ford. Mm-hmm. Um, you know his passing, and just <clears throat> the time that you know I seen a special that they did on him and his his relationship with God and just being a stand up guy. Um, you you seen him in the you couldn't really get a gist of who he really was in the Martin show for me. Mm-hmm. After he passed away, mm-hmm. you start seeing what they said about him, and it shaped his character in a way that it was just showing how how he was always there for everybody. And, mm-hmm. and it's just funny that you would say that he hooked you up with um, Carl, you know, because that's what I seen in 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 his character when they started to speak on him on that Martin special and other specials I've seen where they brought him up. So. I talked to him the day before he passed. Wow. That was so sad. Because he was telling me he had just had double knee surgery. Wow. And he said, Mike, he said, I don't know how I'm holding up all his ass, but these knees <laughs> is killing me. <laughs> and we had a conversation. He said, I want to go see my kids. Wow. One of them was down in Florida. He said, he said, but the, it's the holidays, and they don't. Want, they say they're just gonna come up for Christmas. Man. And then I got. The, then I seen the news the next day, and I was like, "There is no way." I just talked to this dude, man. Wow. So he didn't him. didn't didn't seem like it. it seemed nothing. Like he seemed nothing. fine. We were laughing on the phone. We were having a good time. And next thing you know, I'm like, "That cannot be true." Wait a minute. So you saying a day before? The day before. Did they say what he passed from? Blood clots. Blood clots. But oh. the day before, and that's the same thing I think mm-hmm. Heavy D passed from when he was on the airplane. But mm-hmm. a day before you speak to Tom B. Ford, and the next thing you know, he's passed away. And that's the, we, you know, Ronnie Spencer come on. One day you're here, the next, next day, day you're day gone. gone. You know, you can't take life for granted. No, no. And you got to understand that time is, is but a vapor. Yes. So you gotta you gotta enjoy life while you got opportunity. Yeah. But Tom, that, he definitely was a special guy. Special guy. And he I enjoyed the, the heck guy. out of it. Yeah, he was the first guy to ever say <coughs> to, to another guy, "I love you, man." That I knew of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was saying that again. Yeah. He was the first guy to do what? Say, say I, love I love you to another guy. To another guy, he said, "Mike, I love you." Wow. In the conversation, that's how he ended every conversation. And I was like, "I love you too, bro." You know, you, you know, as guys, made you feel kind of yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But now it's, But you got used to it yeah, after a yeah, while. Yeah. yeah, and now I do it with everybody. Me and Malik, hey bro, I love you, man. Just checking on you, wanna see how you're doing. In memory of Tommy Ford. Yeah, yeah, I do that with everybody, man. because we don't live long enough. Mm-hmm. You know, to we get so caught up in our own uh world. Yeah, and think we think this this is macho, this ain't macho, this is this is this is corny, this ain't corny. I call my friends sometimes, say, Hey man, I'm doing a wellness check. Come on, tell me how you're doing financially, mentally, and physically. Mm-hmm. It's just like um, even with what you what you said about that situation. When you think about, you know, when when you said that, you know, the kids will come for the holidays. It just makes me feel like you know, stop putting off things for tomorrow. You don't know tomorrow is going to ever come. And we interviewed Columbus Short, and he was talking about the passing of Twitch, and how people, you know need to be available for their friends, for people that they know, because you don't know what another person is going through. It hits you like that. You're not thinking about family. You're not thinking about anything. That's why I tell people all the time, if you can talk to somebody before you make a rash decision, talk to somebody. Well, listen, when you have now, as a black executive producer, how do you go from being the DJ to being the executive producer of Ellen, the show, wow. and the host? Mm-hmm. Huh? So you're, so you're already... There, and and he's such a good. He was such. He is a mm-hmm. good man. Good man. Right. Good family man. Yeah. So many people loved him. So many people. Yes. And even although they might not even tell you their business, but it's good for you to just do that wellness check. Call people. Check in. No matter how busy you say you are. That's one thing I hate when people tell me, "Oh, I was busy." I bet you the right call or right person came along. You would drop everything you're doing for that moment in time. 
because you don't want to live this life to be like I wish I could because he even told us about a story about what's a gentleman name something Lee that passed away previously babe uh, I'm, uh, Jet Lee Jet Jet Lee yeah he's also another actor he said when he was um, younger and they were really good friends and he was calling Columbus like back to back to back to back but Columbus was going through something himself and he was like man I called him back I ain't going to even answer it the next day found out he had died. So he's like, man, if Twitch had just called me. After that point, he never did that again. If his phone rings, he's going to answer it because he don't know what that person might need. I used to have this thing, like, I'm like, why am I the only person calling everybody every time? I used to feel that way. Now, I don't. I'm like, I'm calling my friends. I'm talking to them. I'm speaking to them. I don't care. You know what I mean? If I'm going to be the one that's calling, then it's just going to be me. But mm -hmm. I'm going to check on my friends because if I talk to you enough, if I spend time with you enough, I'll know when you're going through something. I'll mm -hmm. know when you off. Me and my best friend, he call, I called him yesterday and said, hey, man, you was in my spirit. I mm -hmm. uh, just want to check on you. He get all in his feelings. What, what, mm -hmm. what, 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 you wishing something bad on me? What, what, what you mean? I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. I said, listen, I just said it. It just had some, but, but I don't know why you call that's I don't know what that is. I said, well, you know what? Maybe you you own something right now. I'm going to mm -hmm. give you a minute. I'm going to call you back. But that has nothing to do with me. I right. did what I was, I did what my heart said to do. Right. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes we think, okay, well, then, you know, m I shouldn't do that because this is the last response I got. No, God places stuff in your heart for a reason. A reason. And then you should act on that reason. Yeah, we on Boss Talk TV. Shout out to E-Heat, a reason you see.